Hi Nadia, thanks for talking to us. How are you doing? Oh, hey Leon. Hey, How are you? thank you very much for finding uh, finding a few minutes to talk with us. I know you've got some commitments, but I was really excited to hear about your new farming show, and I wondered if you're at, uh, free to talk to us about that a bit first of all. Um, yeah, oh, well, so over the last year we've been filming, so we started filming about November last year. We're still going, we'll, we'll keep going until until um, as far as we can before the show goes on air. Right. And we've been to film over a whole year to kind of capture all the seasons and, you know, farming is... ...for the things to happen over a whole year, hence why we need to film it. Yes, to cover the seasons. Ah. So it kind of shows our farming our farming journey um, over the last year, but also we talk about you know um, the farming journey from the very beginning when we um, first yeah yeah first got underway. And of course, we should tell people that this is a 485 hectare sheep and barley farm. And it's funny, Nadia, I was in at Royal Burn shop on the weekend, and I got some amazing sunflower oil from Royal Burn. The shop is is looking great. It's packed. Lots of new things in there Thank at the moment. You. Oh, really good. Yeah, always lots of new things. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, no, we well we do we do a lot more than just um, lamb and barley. Like we yeah, we have a few different wings. So we've got the livestock wing, which is um, yeah, mainly sheep, but also chickens, the pasture raised free range eggs. They're the most free range chickens in the country, like hands down. <laughs> I don't, I can't think I don't think there'd be another place that had chickens that that had more space. Um, I had to a customer once asked like, how much space do your chickens actually have? And I had to work it out on a calculator because you know <laughs> we've got several several flocks of four to five hundred, and they're out in the open space with the grass, and they've got their homes and their little shelter and stuff. Um, and I worked it out on a calculator, and on on average, each chicken's got about a thousand square meters of grass. So it's it's. Yeah, a, a lot of space for them. It's pretty um, good. But we also do, yeah, yeah, more space than most humans would have in um, New Zealand, I'd say. Um, and then we also do, yeah, as you mentioned, sunflower oil, spray-free um, sunflower oil. Um, we have an orga organic market garden, which is only, it's only about four acres that's been planted out so far, but, you know, hopefully that'll grow. Um, yeah, we do honey as well. We do a really lovely... Royal burn honey and different other different greens and seeds as well. And we have our own butchery on site too, our own abattoir butchery for um, our meat animals. That's actually really key, isn't it, to to your whole philosophy of, of having having that there? Because you you're pretty much light organic. I mean, pretty much spray free, and then and then also so you're doing it you're doing it the proper the correct way, aren't you? You know, so you're raising. And the the yeah, and the the way they meet their end is is humane, and it's all part of the process of the food chain. Yeah, well, it's it's hard to say. Well, with with animal ethics, absolutely, absolutely. I think um, it's been a really big step to have our own abattoir. And the reason we invested in that because it was a big investment was so that um, you know our animals didn't have to travel or wait or you know, kind of go through that um, traditional process. It's a gory kind of, you know, and confrontational topic to talk about, but oh, yeah. you are going to eat meat. I guess, you know, you, you do need to, to face the truth and know the truth. Um, yeah, and so it's, it is actually really, you know, they, they, they still die at the, at the end of it, obviously, but I, I can genuinely say, you know, the process is very, like, stress-free. I mean, there'd probably be about 15 seconds 10 to 15 seconds where, you know, I might be a bit stressed, um, which is very different to having to travel on trucks, obviously, and wait and be in an unfamiliar place and everything. Yeah. Mm. As with um, your comment before, so, you know, doing things the, the right way, I don't know. I would have to say, hand on heart, that having gone into farming, that I don't know if there is a right or wrong way <laughs> with anything. I don't think anything's black or white. You know, whether um, people farm conventionally, traditionally, um, organic or regenerative, like, I think I have to say that there's pros and cons to all of the different systems. I think it's too simplistic to say that one way is right and one way is wrong. Um, yeah, which is an interesting and very big conversation <laughs> that we won't have time for today. But yeah, for sure. It would probably take it would take days and days to you know cover cover um, lots of it. But yeah, I mean, what I would say is that I think in the media there there. Um, 
you know, farmers a lot of the time are painted as doing, you know, doing a lot of damage and stuff. And, and I think it's like any industry. You've got really, really good ones who do a great job, who genuinely care, and they do do a good job. They're, and they, they are, like, doing everything that they can, and they really, really do care. But um, then, you've, and then you've got others that that aren't good at their job, you know? Mm. It's just the same as any other industry, but I think it's a very hot, topical thing at the moment, so they kind of get a bit more um, attention and light thrown on them um, than other industries. That's right, I think so. Okay, so, and, and well, let's get back to this to the show, because I need to, uh, to find out when, when, we, when we can actually uh, see this. So, uh, you, you know, I, I know how long it can take to make a television show. Were there some frustrating episodes on the farm where things weren't quite going to plan for this? Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's, it's just a show, like it's, it's not a curated show, if that, if that makes sense. Like it's not a planned show. It's, it's, a, it's very, yeah, it, Warner Brothers, who's making it, they even said, they said, man, we've never done a show like this that has no plan. Um, so we, right. they literally will, will turn up with a cameraman um, and, a, and a guy who's like director, but we're not directed. And it's just kind of whatever's happening that day on the farm is what's filmed. Like nothing kind of planned specifically or, or acted out or anything. Yeah. Oh, I guess you can't really, because I mean, let's face it: working with animals is always unpredictable, and just just farm life in general. You don't know if it's going to be snowing up on the range, or how how the weather's going to treat you, and a whole bunch of things. I mean, I suppose a, a farmer's life is one with rolling of rolling with the punches, Nadia. Oh, absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. You 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 can't, and that's all you have to learn to live with. That you can't, um, yeah. That you you can't, you know, predict or control. Um, many things, you know, some years you have a great year, like last year, um, we, we did really well this just like, just as last season with our crops, with our arable wing, um, because we, you know, the, the weather was very, was conducive to it and, and we had a nice hot dry summer, which allowed us to harvest earlier and, you know, it was a great harvest. However, because we had such a hot dry summer, a very long one too this year, the new crops that we put in the ground, um, our germination strike rate hasn't been as good like they just haven't taken off as well so okay. this coming season isn't going to be as good so it's just very different every year yeah mm. and uh, and and just finally you know springtime uh, summer approaching it definitely feels like those days are lengthening what are you um what are you excited about sort of seeing crop up you know in in your environment where you live oh i think um your yeah, spring's a really special season and actually it's I think I've, I think it's become my favourite season. I always used to be more of a kind of summer mm. summer person, but I really, really appreciate spring because if you take notice, like you know, if you and I, I think I'm quite an observant person when it when it comes to nature, but it's just actually miraculous. No, no matter how many times you see it, it's truly miraculous seeing things come from nothing to just full life mm. and and that's what you witness with spring like if you you notice all of a sudden on the farm like i see um pairs of ducks all around you know they're obviously mating and i think some of them have got nests and oyster catchers and and you you hear different sounds like you hear um you know the sounds of young new animals and and then you see these tiny buds, you know, suddenly come to life that you kind of thought, oh gosh, that looks so dead. How's that going to come back? But yeah. everything does. Yeah. yeah. And that's just, that's so miraculous. No matter how t how many times you see it, you just, it always blows my mind. Mm, it's so, it's yeah, great. That's, that's yeah. what I love. So it's like promise, a promise of new beginnings. Yeah, totally. And in terms of like, um, you know, food and things. I mean, oh, I really look forward to asparagus, but obviously that's a wee, a yeah. wee, a wee way off, isn't it? I mean, that's just so great when you get to what? When when are we going to get that? Yeah. October? Is it oh, October? Oh yeah, October. I I actually I so yesterday I um was prepping my asparagus bed, so um I kind of you know laid down some more compost on it and um, cu cut back some of some of the other ferns, you know, that it all died off. And, mm. and I've just mulched it with some pea straw and everything and actually found a couple of really, really, really early ones, like underground, coming up. So, yeah. Oh, that's, I'd that's say interesting. probably another, yeah, another six to eight weeks away, mm. not too far. I'd say so. Do you have strawberries up there? 
I do. I've planted all my strawberries. Um, yeah, so looking forward to them as well. Oh, yeah. Berries are, berries are fantastic. And then when we get to December, we get all the cherries. And it's pretty special, Central Otago, uh, when, when, you know, when all that summer stuff comes out. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great time, a regeneration time, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. And then you, you gorge on it so much. You get sick of it by the, you know, by the end of the of the, of the season. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and but, then you got to wait another nine months. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But the nice thing too is that you know you can steer away from all those heavy winter foods that you needed in the bleak, you know, depths of July and the you know the midwinter stuff that you go for, the comfort food. And now, yeah. I don't know if you're noticing that, but just sort of switching more to a few salads and things and uh, lightening up a bit. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I've got some beautiful broccoli in the garden at the moment. It suddenly just all appeared. Um, and, and I'm going to pick it tonight. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, I'm going to make like a real, I feel like something really fresh. Instead of cooking mm. the broccoli, I'm going to just blitz it, like pulse it in the food processor until it's finely chopped. But, yeah. you know, be careful not to over, over pulse it. Um, so it's just very finely chopped. And then I'm going to do like, um, toss some cranberries and sunflower seeds through it. And do a really nice dressing. There'll be like a fresh broccoli salad, maybe a little bit of feta sprinkled on top. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be pretty tasty with all those different flavours. You know, even if you didn't love broccoli. Yeah. I, I do. And I'm just but a bit a lot of people over, don't. you know, having, having roasted roasted veg and, and yeah. um, steamed veg all over winter. I'm like, I'm a bit over that. So looking forward to doing it in a, in a different way. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, that's a great little tip, and thank you, Nadia, for that. And I'll let you get on with your day, but uh, have a great one and look forward to chatting to you again in the future. Yeah, you too, Leanne. Take care and thanks, it's and a enjoy. beautiful day down here, so oh, yeah, enjoy. Isn't it? Enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> we'll catch you soon. Nadia Lim on the platform. You're listening to South Beat. Uh